that what we both know, uh, which uh, translated into English could mean a lot of things, including I'm getting sick and tired, uh, cabin fever comes to mind. I don't know about you, but I wish Mr. Virus just, would just walk on by and relieve us of this isolation. Anyway, there's been plenty of time for reflection on various subjects. Most of you, like I, have grown up in the rural parts of our country and are still quite familiar with farming and agriculture in general. I think you might enjoy hearing about a unique business experience I had back in the 1980s. As you know, my career was in agriculture, more specifically in genetics and plant breeding. I ended up in California, where agriculture is still a very big deal. At first, I was working for large corporations, but then in 1984, I started my own seed company. We specialized in developing agriculture seed products for the Middle East region. So I became quite familiar with the Arab world. My story relates to the time period following the Arab-Israeli War, which happened in 1973. You may remember that. The Arabs were beaten badly, and the only tool they had for retaliation was oil. They controlled a majority of the oil used by the industrial world, and so in a very short period of time, the average price for a barrel of crude oil went from around $20 to over $100. Pretty soon, the Arab world was awash in money. Money and sand. One of the main players in this was Saudi Arabia a place where we were just getting started with our new seed company. I do recall that one morning, rumor has it that the king got up, stretched, and was in a sour mood. He was sick and tired of hearing reports that the world was quietly laughing, saying things like, look at those primitive Arabs. When the oil runs out, they'll have to go back to their camels. He got his ministers together and said, we will show them. We're going to start by becoming self-sufficient in the basic necessities of life. I want you to start by making sure that we can produce most of our own food. Within days, the Ministry of Agriculture announced a subsidy on local wheat production amounting to 400% of the current world price. And this was a big a local shock. And very soon, the world agriculture industry came knocking at the Saudi door. No problem, they said. We'd be happy to help you out. Up until then, there had been virtually no crop production in Saudi Arabia. The land and climate were simply not suited for it. But now they did have the cash, so the king's ego had to be respected. My distributor, Adib Mahmoud, called me with the news and suggested I get over there pronto. We had a lot of planning to do. <clears throat> Our intention was to become one of the main suppliers of wheat planting seed. First, we had to decide which wheat varieties were best suited to the Saudi conditions. Of course, irrigation was central, and there already was lots of eth efforts underway 
to create the conditions to bring this dream into reality. It was quite bizarre. They had to go quite deep to reach the water for irrigation. And in some cases, the water was so hot, they had to build cooling towers before it could be used to irrigate the plants. The cost of implementing this largely artificial infrastructure was enormous and never really talked about. The soil was very sandy and hence infertile, so huge quantities of fertilizer were required. In our case, <clears throat> we ran extensive variety trials in both California and Saudi Arabia to determine the best wheat varieties. Next, we had to line up seed production with our California growers and make sure uh, we had the equipment to process and package a large volume of seed. No one really knew what the grain production objectives were in Saudi Arabia. It was really a wild west atmosphere. I have to admit, I loved it. It all developed fairly fast. <clears throat> Decisions were made quickly in the government because it's a central authoritarian kind of system. The global suppliers were pri private companies who were eager to participate and who could act rather quickly. Our situation was that we were already active in the local seed market and our brand was getting to be well known and respected by the Saudi farmers. Our wheat seed sales doubled each year for the first three years and soon we were the largest certified wheat seed supplier in the kingdom. Everything was huge. Our annual sales to Saudi Arabia were around 50,000 metric tons of certified planting seed, all fungicide treated and packed in 50 kilo bags. That's enough to plant about a million acres. There's a short video here that, that demonstrates th what Fresno, this Fresno was like. County. And this is a field of certified Yukora Rojo seed that's being irrigated right now with uh, siphon surface irrigation and here are two gentlemen Don McAllister S&W Seed Company and Vince Steiner the owner who farms this land with his son John is that right Vince pretty yeah close, right. pretty close <laughs> and you got a little help too right yes <laughs> um, how far are we from Fresno here, Vince? About 40 miles southwest of Fresno. Oh, yeah. Okay. And uh, how many acres do you farm, Vince? We have the 12 sections here on the ranch. Okay. How many acres is that? About a little over 7,000 acres. Uh -huh. And your main crops are? Uh, cotton, tomatoes for the cannery, wheat, lettuce, Lettuce for seed, uh -huh. safflower, uh -huh. and a few other minor crops. Yeah, <laughs> should be enough to keep you busy. Um, what we're we're standing here on a wheat one of your wheat fields. How, mu how much certified Yukora Rojo are you growing this year, Vince? About a thousand acres. Oh yeah, and you expect to get how much tonnage off of that? R roughly, uh, makes about the. About, about three and a quarter tons would be an average uh, crop for mm -hmm. us. Per acre. Per acre. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. We've been monitoring that for years, and that's just about what it. Yeah, that's about the average. About the average. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, this field that we're on right now, Vince, uh, when was this planted? It was planted uh, just, uh, just before Christmas time, about the 25th. Of about the 25th of uh, December. Mm -hmm. And right now we are in, uh, in the middle of, just past the middle of April. 
and you'll probably be harvesting about, about the 20th of uh, July. Uh, uh. 20th of June we'll start. Yeah, you know, you've contracted this field out to S&W Seed Company, right? That's correct. Okay, Don, how, how often has the state been out here uh, inspecting this for certification? Is well, we have two inspections. One of them is done by the California Department of Agriculture through the Ag Commissioners, and that's for the phytosanitary, and that gets three inspections. They've already had two. They have one more to go. Oh, yeah. Uh, they look at it at different stages of growth to check for different diseases. And then in about the uh, middle of May, California Crop will come along and, and do its certification inspection. So actually there's four inspections by two agencies uh -huh. that's going to get on all these things. Uh -huh.
high octane time, we had to always keep in mind how artificial this whole thing was. After all, it began very suddenly at the whim of a powerful king and could stop just as suddenly if he decided that he had made his point. This kind of production required quite a bit of long-range planning. At average yields of three tons per acre, our sales required production from about 17,000 acres. What do we do if the king decides halfway through a production cycle that he is quite happy now and shuts the whole thing down overnight? And that could really happen. And <clears throat> we had molds deep inside the Saudi Department of Agriculture. We had production agreements with uh, grain brokers in California who would take the seed as grain for making flour if we were not able to use it as planting seed. I will never forget the phone call in February 1993 when Adib called me from Saudi Arabia and told me don't sign those purchase orders for bags from South Korea. There's something weird going on over here. As it turned out, the king canceled the wheat subsidy in April 1993, and the whole operation came to a screeching halt. Many companies went broke. We made it because we were cautious, and we had an excellent information network. And then we went back to selling hybrid tomato seed after that. <laughs> Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this story. It was a very unusual experience. Bye.